Hi everyone! In this video, we'll try to find the answer to the question What is software testing? Let's start with the IS2QB explanation. Currently, IS2QB is the leading global certification scheme in the field of software testing. And when we will talk formally, we'll use their syllabus and the glossary as references. A link to the IS2QB website will be provided in the materials for the video. Let's get familiar with the IS2QB definition first. Testing, the process consisting of all life cycle activities, both static and dynamic, concerned with planning, preparation, and evaluation of software products and related work products to determine that they satisfy specified requirements to demonstrate that they are fit for purpose and to detect defects. As usual, a lot of theoretical words. To explain this definition, we need to dive deep into the IS2QB theory, and we are not going to do this in this video. Another issue with this definition is that it is really unlikely that you'll remember it and use it in real interview. So, let's simplify it. Or, what we're going to say in our videos, translate to human language. The definition sounds like this. Testing the process which consists of test activities and tasks builds confidence in the level of quality of the software products and helps to determine the software products meet specified requirements and user-customer needs and expectations. It is still very theoretical and sounds complex, because it is like saying everything you know about the testing in one sentence. As a result, you have this theoretical answer which has nothing related to life. Let us illustrate what we mean. Let's imagine that your dream job is not a software tester, but a taxi driver. Yes, that's right, a taxi driver. You go to the taxi driver interview, and what do you think will be the first question asked? Most likely, it will be something like this. Do you have a valid driving license? Unfortunately, you're wrong. If an interview for a taxi driver is similar to an interview for a software tester, then the first question will be What is driving? Yes, that's right. What is driving? This would be the first question they would ask. And your answer will sound like this. Driving is the controlled operation and movement of a vehicle. It sounds silly because the question and the answer are related to the job theoretically, but has nothing related to real life. Unfortunately, when you come to the first testing interview, most likely the first question they will ask you is, what is testing? And you can be creative and go your own way. But we suggest the theoretical answer to the theoretical question. The one we introduce in the human language section, you can pause the video and read it one more time. The reason why we organize the answer in this way is that it leads to follow-up questions. Let's now examine our answer sentence by sentence. The first sentence is The process consists of test activities and tasks. The sentence leads to the follow-up question What is the software testing lifecycle? Or What stages of STLC do you know? Let's go through the rest of the definition and then we can discuss what it gives to us. The next sentence is builds confidence in the level of quality of the software products and this one is related to the next follow-up question. What is the difference between QA, QC and testing? This is a popular question in an interview. Let's check the last sentence and helps to determine the software products meet specified requirements and user-customer needs and expectations. And this one relates to another popular question. What is the difference between verification and validation? And I think you already understand the benefit of this definition. There is a huge chance that the interviewer will ask one of these after you answer to the what is testing question, and each of them will have a separate video in our course. So, that is basically it, the answer to the question, what is software testing? This is a theoretical question with a theoretical answer, but we suggest to dive deep into the theory and check one more page in the software testing book. 
Let's get familiar with the typical objectives of testing. It will help us to better understand the definition. Let's check the objectives. To find as many defects as possible doesn't need additional explanation. It's the main objective of testing. To verify whether all specified requirements have been fulfilled. This is included in our definition and refers to verification. To validate if the software product works as the users and other customers expect. This is included in our definition and refers to validation. To provide information to customers to allow them to make decisions regarding the level of quality of the software product and the risk of releasing the system. To prevent defects by finding defects in early SDLC stages by evaluating work products such as requirements, design and code. And this one has three sub-objectives. To identify defects in requirements and prevent defects in design. To identify defects in design and prevent defects in code. Identifying defects prior to a release prevents users from facing failures after their release. It's a lot of theory in one minute of the video. You can pause the video and read those one more time. In reality, it's simple. Let us show all these objectives in one image. Are these screens familiar to you? You try to purchase something and then you see the error. Something went wrong. Or you try to save the document. And then an unexpected error occurred. So you lost a couple of hours of work. Or you search for the restaurant in the browser and then 500 error is displayed. Everyone had a situation when something went wrong with the phone, laptop or browser. And you couldn't do anything about it. That is an example of when the testing objectives is failed. Identifying defects prior to a release prevents users from facing failures after the release. Ideally, we should find all the bugs, so you as an end user would never see screens like this. Unfortunately, it is not possible. We will learn in, in a separate video about the testing principles. So the next best goal is to find as many defects as possible, so you as an end user will see the screens as rarely as possible. And we think that it is enough of the theory. Let's get familiar with a real-life example, which will illustrate why the testing is important. Let's imagine that there is a company which produces jeans. They have the best name in the world, but they don't have the website. So they decided to hire a software company to create a website for them. The project manager starts to ask typical questions, like what color of the website does the customer prefer, or how many products they expect to sell per day. The customer gives some of the answers, like that they prefer a blue color as they sell jeans, but not all the answers. The customer says that they want to hire experts, and the experts should provide answers not ask questions. Like their main competitor, Best Jeans Company, they hired experts who made a website and doubled their sales. So in the end, customer wants a better website than the Best Jeans Company has and wants it to be launched on a Black Friday. The manager says that they need at least seven people for the job, five developers and two testers. The customer says that he will test the website himself, he doesn't rely on anyone and would build the website himself if he could, and leaves. The manager is confused, but decides to start work on the project. The manager starts with the requirements, he writes those down couple of cards, the color is blue, and the website should be better than the best jeans company has. Release date, Black Friday. No testers. User acceptance testing only, and no more questions, only answers, because we are the experts. Requirements are very poor, still it could be worse. The manager presents requirements to the team, and developers are very happy. There are no testers, so no bugs will be found. And the work begins. Developers develop the website. And the testers just sit on social media. In a couple of months of hard work, the final version is ready to be tested. There are five pages in total. Home, product, 
cart, order and contact, with a lot of functionalities common for the online shops. And you remember the testers are not involved in the project. The customer wants to test the website on his own. It is called user acceptable testing. The customer has not found any bugs and says that everything is okay. There is a tiny issue with the color, but it doesn't block the release on Black Friday. Finally, the day comes. Black Friday. It is midnight and the sales start. After the first hour, at 1 a.m., there are 1,000 purchases, which is a great result. The next hour, 2 a.m., about 5,000 sales in total, which is an amazing. The third hour is not that great, only 1,000 additional purchases. Still, it is okay. But the fourth hour shows that nobody bought anything. The number is exactly the same as at 3 a.m. So the development team is suspicious. Something is not right. They go to the website and what do they see there? And they see the screen we discussed before. 500 error, something went wrong. It is not good, not good at all. Most likely the website is down for a long time and they had no clue. Why did nobody call them? Speaking of calling, at the same time the manager received the phone call. The customer from Genie Jeans company is calling. They received hundreds of calls to the hotline. He says that people lose money and want refunds. He is very disappointed. A lot of people see this error. Can you imagine that you put your credit card details, click the buy button on the website and then see this, 500 error. As a result, company loses customers and reputation. On the other hand, competitors, the best jeans company sold 100,000 pairs of jeans that night because people couldn't buy jeans on the Genie Jeans website and went to competitors to buy jeans on sale. And the Genie Jeans company sold 6,000 pairs but lost reputation and customers. And you wonder what exactly happened there. You will find the answer very soon. Let me tell you another story. So the story is the same, but with a small little difference. At the first meeting, the customer read with the project manager and approved to hire testers. Customers still can test if they want. They test in their specific way, which can find issues the tester would never find. But testers also can find issues that customers would never find. In our case, the tester did the magic and provides the report to the development team. The website can't handle more than 5,000 sessions. It means only 5,000 users can be on the website at the same time. It's a big issue. So the team decided that the server they rent is too weak and they purchase a more powerful server, which can handle 100,000 users. As a result, the website was up all night and the customers were able to buy all the jeans they wanted and were extremely happy. It was a great success for the company. More than 50,000 jeans were sold, and more importantly, their Genie Jeans company didn't lose its reputation. Even more, most likely people will come back and buy new jeans later on the website. And that is only one imaginable reason why testing is important. This long visualization is related to the one of the testing objectives we discussed before. Identifying defects prior to a release prevents users from facing failures after the release. And there are more objectives to learn and explain, but we think that these two are the most important to find as many defects as possible and prevent users from facing failures after the release. You can pause the video and read all objectives one more time. Also, you can pause the video and read the software testing definitions one more time. The first one is the ISTQP definition. The second is our definition. And you can check other videos related to this question, like what is the difference between verification and validation? Or what is the difference between QA, QC and testing? As we said, most likely this will be the follow-up questions. 
That's all for now. It's our answer to the question, what is software testing?